this example, we are going to deal with relationships, and they're going to help us to do something very simple actually. If you have a look at this data model that I have created in a new project which is called Realm Relationships, and you will find that in your exercise files. In this data model for this new project, I have added a new class called Notebook to our data model, only this class has just two properties, a title and a creation date. And what we actually want to achieve is that we have one notebook and, as in the physical world, one notebook should be able to hold many notes, and one note or many notes should belong to one notebook, and this is something that we can achieve by using relationships and these kind of relationships they help us to ensure data integrity. They contribute to database normalization, and they also reduce redundancies. And this is a very common term or a very common technique when it comes to databases, and we are going to use a one-to-many relationship now in this example. And a one-to-many relationship, we use that because we have one notebook and many notes. So many notes can be part of one notebook. And to establish such a one-to-many relationship between our notebook and the many notes that we are going to create, we are going to add a new property to our notebook class. There's a specific type of object or property that we can create here, and this is also a Swift type, so we do not have to use Objective-C dynamic because this does not have to rely on the Objective-C runtime. Going to call this property notes, and what it is called is list, and list is a container type in Realm used to define too many relationships. And we can even specify a type here so we can use our note type which means that we now have a list of notes added as a property to our notebook, which means that we can put many notes into our notebook or into one notebook, which is pretty cool, and we're going to have a look at how this works now in App Delegate where I've also added some more code. In did finish launching with options, I have created our default realm in line 21. This is a warning at the moment because we are not using this realm yet, so I can also add some comments here so that we don't have this warning. Then we are creating a notebook here using a function that I have written which does nothing fancy. You know all that stuff, so I just pass along a name. We could also say my second notebook because I've already created one. So we're calling this function, and it has one parameter which is the title of our notebook. We are creating a realm in this notebook, in this create notebook function, and the rest is pretty similar to what you've already did, creating a notebook object, assigning the title, assigning the creation date, using a write transaction to add our new notebook to our realm. And that's all there is to it. And the now the interesting part begins. In line 42 here where we call in another function that is called add notes to a specific notebook. And in this function, this is what we are going to implement right now, we are going to add notes to a notebook. Since we do not have real data at the moment, I'm simply using a for loop here iterating a few times and creating some note objects, so let's create a note object right here. Let's initialize this note object with a title. Therefore, I'm just using note and the counter variable i to give it a slightly different name each time we iterate through that loop. And for the content, I'm just using the current date also using string interpolation here to add the state object to my string, and then we can already begin adding our notes to our notebook. And the way to do that is, first of all, let's maybe create a new realm here right on top of our for loop so we have a realm. We try and force this to work without error handling. We are using the realm initializer, which gives us our default realm, and then what we want to do is, using our realm again together with a try statement, using realm write because we are changing our notebook now, we have to do that in a write transaction. So I'm taking the notebook and taking our new notes property, which is our list, and here, just like with an array. I can just append my new node object or our 5 or 6 node objects that we have created in our for loop. And if I now build that, that should work fine. 
and we can actually have a look at the result right now going back up here into our application did finish launching with options function and I'm going to remove my comment now here and below the create notebook function I'm going to add an if let statement for one notebook let's just use one notebook here using our realm objects to get some objects using the notebook type self and here I just want to get my last object so the last one that I have just added to my database and now we also want to have a look if we have a note let's first of all maybe print the notebook going to add notebook here colon and a break line right here and then use string interpolation to just print that notebook and see how that looks and then what we are also going to do is create an if let statement for the first note and using our notebook and notes and maybe getting just the first note. This is how we can again access this, just like we would with standard array. And then I'm going to print my first note, and then let's run this real quickly in the simulator and see what we get. So running now, so here we are. And we have our console and, as you can see, if we have a look at our notebook, then we have a title, which is my second notebook, we have a creation date, and we have a notes list that contains all of our notes from note 0 to note 5. So all of them are already here and by just accessing our node just as we would with an array, as we did here in line 28 when we use the fist element of our notes list, we got our first note which is note 0, and this is how we can access our relationship data and how we can also add multiple notes to a single notebook using a one-to-many relationship. Now there is one last thing that we need to consider, which is what if we actually need to know the notebook that belongs to a note. We already have a way from our notebook to the note, so we have this list. But how can we actually create the inverse of this relationship so that we can also figure out which notebook belongs to which note, and therefore we have another special type that we can add to our data model. So in our note class, I'm going to formulate the notebook, which is the inverse, because this is going to be our target here for this relationship. We're coming from the note and the destination is going to be the notebook and accessing this property will give us the notebook that belongs to a specific note. And there's also a special type here in Realm, which is the linking objects type, which is really, really cool because we can now define the type that we are targeting, which is our notebook, using self again to define the type, and the property that we are targeting here. And this is the notes property because this is the relationship from where we are originating, and now, with this notebook property, we have defined the actual inverse for this relationship. And if we are now going back into our app delegate and into our if statement here where we print our first note, what we can also do is print the first note, and its notebook. We should build our application first so that we also get auto completion for that. So we print our first note, its notebook and, as you can see, this is now the linking object, also again a list, because we could also add one note to multiple notebooks. In our case, we do not do that so we can just use the first element from this list, which is going to be our originating notebook. And, for example, access the title. And with that, we should be able to get the title of the notebook where this note belongs to, which should be my second notebook. So let's just try that out. I'm going to add a common, mumbles, for your notebook because we no longer want to create a new notebook. So I'm running this now in the simulator, and we should be able to see our notebook title. And there, indeed, it is, currently marked as optional because we did not unwrap that, and we did also not check if it is really there. But as you can see, our inverse worked, and we can now communicate in both directions from a notebook to a note and back from the note to a notebook.